In this video, I'm going to start tackling the extensions for the screw jacks. We've got two of them, a one inch long extension and a two inch long extension. And we're going to be tackling the bores on the underside. So we'll be facing, drilling a hole, and boring. So we have a one inch and a two inch extension. Uh, the finish length is actually one and an eighth and two and an eighth because of the height of the boss. So make sure to cut your pieces uh, an inch and a quarter and two and a quarter inches respectively. Now each one has a bore on the bottom side, which is exactly the same as the first piece that we made. So it's 800 thousandths plus four minus nothing, and the depth is 125 plus 10 minus nothing. On the other end, we have the boss that's going to fit into those bores. So on that one, we have the opposite tolerance. 800 thousandths plus nothing minus four, so we'd actually be aiming for 798 as opposed to 802 for this one. That means that they're going to meet together with no interference. Likewise, the boss's height is plus nothing minus 10. So we're aiming for 120 on that one. We're aiming for 130 on this one. Ideally, we'll have approximately 10 thousandths clearance between the top of that boss and the bottom of that bore. So we shouldn't have any interference whatsoever. They have a clearance hole through the middle, which is listed as 531, 17 30 seconds of an inch and all other tolerances on the sheet are plus or minus 10. I'm going to do this a little bit differently uh, just so I don't have to change setups as much I'm going to go ahead and touch off and face and I'm going to drill the hole and make the bore on this side before I face the whole thing to length. There's my touch off, zero my Z just going to move in a little bit there So I'm going to spot drill and then drill the hole. Uh, this is a clearance hole for a half 20. It's marked on the print as 1730 seconds. Always a good idea, especially with deep holes like this, to occasionally pull out and clear the chips, add a little bit more oil. way through. So just like the bore that we did on the first piece, uh, it's the exact same bore. I'm going to touch off on the end and I'm going to move in 120 thousandths. Um, that's going to be shy of where my target is. I have plus 10 minus nothing on a 125 deep bore, so my goal is actually 130. Um, but I don't want to I don't want to go straight to 130 and accidentally go too far because I touched off too heavily or because something moved and then uh, end up missing my tolerance. So I'm always going to stop shy, I'll make a nice little facing cut on the inside and then I'll, uh, um, I'll actually get to my final dimension later. I'm going to set that as my Z0, and just like before, I'm going to you know, zero my X at just a random spot that I know is, is too small, and I'll get a measurement after this pass. So that's showing 590 thousandths. I'm going to go ahead and input that into my digital readout. And I'll go ahead and base all my other cuts off of that. This will be my first finish pass. I'll take a measurement after this. So we're showing 777 and a half. That's right where I should be. And remember, this one 
is 800 thousandths plus four minus nothing to make sure that it fits over that boss on the mating part. So I'm shooting for 802. What I did there at the end is just take a light facing pass on the face at the bottom of the shoulder. Um, I'm still shy of the 130 target and I did that just so I get a nice square shoulder that's going to be a good measurement on it. So we're showing 803 on the diameter, that's good. Just like before I'm going to get that burr off of the edge of the hole so it doesn't affect my depth measurement. That's good. And this time, rather than using the depth rod on my calipers, which again, that's, that's kind of difficult to keep it straight, so you may or may not get a very good measurement, I'm going to show you a depth mic. So here's a depth micrometer. And it's read the exact same way as a, a normal micrometer, with one big exception. Um, the thimble is actually covering up the measurements that you need to see. So basically, if you're reading it as 130 thousandths deep, you can't see the 100 thousandths mark or the 125 mark. Uh, so you have to read what is there and extrapolate what's not there on the main scale. So in this case, let's go ahead and see what we have. Um, Put your, your base as flat as possible on the end of the piece. And then I don't like to rely on the ratchet thimble on these because it's, it's enough that it jacks it up off of the part and it kind of makes, uh, makes it wobble a little bit. So I actually just grip very lightly on the stationary portion of the thimble and then wait until my fingers slip. So right now you can see 200, uh, 175, 150, you can see the 125 mark and we're at zero on the thimble. So we're actually right on 125 thousandths. Now technically that's within our tolerance, um, but it's right on the low end and if the mating part is on the high end, we may have interference issues. So I'm going to go ahead and just go in five more thousandths. So when I did that facing cut, I started at the edge of the hole on the inside of the part and then came out towards the edge of the bore, towards the large diameter of the bore. Uh, the reason is you've got less contact with the tool that way. You're only contacting there, whereas if you tried to plunge in and then move in towards the middle, you'd have all this area contacting and you'd probably end up getting a lot of chatter. Um, in fact, it's pretty much guaranteed. You've got this boring bar sticking out, not very far in this case, but it's flexible enough that it's going to chatter. So whenever you're getting that square shoulder in the in the bore, start towards the edge of the hole, bring it out, and just bring it out to the same digital readout or dial setting that you had when you cranked out initially. And again, I'm going to go ahead and check this with my depth mic before I pull it out of the lathe. and we are at 130 thousandths. So that's my target dimension, and again, it's my target dimension because I'm aiming for the middle of my tolerance. I have a plus 10 minus nothing tolerance on the depth of that bore. So this side is done on this part. Before I do the other side and I make the boss, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the shorter of the two extensions, um, the one inch high extension, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the bore on that as well because I've already got the tool set up, I have my my part zeroed on the digital readout, um, so it's just going to make it a little bit easier. It's not going to take as much time to do it that way, as opposed to finishing this part in its entirety and then coming back and having to re-zero everything with both tools. By the way, um, I call them the one inch and the two inch extensions, uh, but the finished length of the part is actually inch and an eighth and two and an eighth because you have that eighth inch tall boss on the end of this. So when you cut your blanks for these, I'm actually cutting them, again, an eighth of an inch long. Uh, so I'm cutting them to two and a quarter inches and one and a quarter inches, respectively. So here's what's going to be the shorter of the two extensions. And I've actually already got this faced off and cut to length. I did that earlier. 
So I'm just going to drill the hole, I'll touch off on the end, and aside from that, everything should be the exact same as the previous bore. I'm going to get my tool out of here so it's out of the way. Just like before, I'm going to spot it and then I'm going to drill it. So I know my diameter is going to be basically the exact same as what I've already got set. All I need to do is touch off on the end, and I'm still going to take measurements before I do my final pass, um, but I should be in the ballpark. I don't actually have to re-zero my x-axis. I'm going to make that my z0, and I'm going to follow the exact same procedure. First of my finished passes. Get my diameter. Yeah, it looks like we're seven eighty right there. And here's my facing pass on the inside. Bringing it up to a 125 deep first and getting a measurement. Get rid of my burr so it doesn't affect my depth measurement. 802 on the diameter, so that's good. This should be shy. Yep. Just a uh, Maybe four tenths under 125 right now. I'll do the same thing that I did on the last one. And I'm at uh, 129 thousandths. That's well within my tolerance as well. I shouldn't have any interference issues with the mating part.